Today we're going to look at exponential growth and compound interest. The learning goals for this lesson are that we're going to be looking at being able to write simple expon exponential rules and be able to apply those exponential rules to find solutions and then we're going to be able to determine unknown values using the compound interest formula. So firstly exponential growth, we've looked at exponential equations. Exponential growth details how different uh, variables change exponentially as other variables change. Usually what we see is that as time increases we see an exponential growth, we see an exponential decay with these kind of things and exponential decay occurs an awful lot in nature. Exponential growth um, and decay occur, uh, we've got growth when we're talking about bacteria and the reason that bacteria have exponential growth is because each bacterium divides um, divides in two and in each of those two divides in two so we go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and so and, and that happens at a regular time interval so say every 20 minutes a bacterium might, might divide and so we see that the actual population of bacteria a, a grows ex exponentially because it doubles each time. So it's um, two to the power of whatever um, time period we're talking about. We also um, can see exponential decay um, in the in radioactive substances. Um, so radioactive substances decay exponentially. So we see them decaying very very quickly over time and slowing down. And we talk about the half life of a radioactive substance. That's the time it takes for half of that substance to um, decay and then after another time period it's gone down by another half and then after another time period so you can see it's progressively halving each time rather than progressively doubling as in the example with the bacteria. So um, if we have a look at some definitions and, and how we can model that those kind of situations now we can have a look at um, this the phrase per annum per annum which or PA which you might see in question it's Latin for by the year it means per year um, so every year. So if we're looking at a growth rate, um, it might be given as 6% PA or 6% per annum. And that means that that growth rate occurs um, and increases by 6% in one year and then by further 6% the next year and so on and so on. So we can model exponential growth and decay using this um, general form of the rule here. Uh, A is equal to K times a to the power of t. a is the amount at the time that we're talking about, so after so many years. k is the starting amount, the initial value. a is the growth rate, it's called the growth rate or the decay rate, and t is the time period that we're talking, that we're interested in, the time um, after that initial um, value has been um, decided or the initial value has been um, chosen. So um, when we're trying to determine the growth rate, um, that's the value for A, if we know the percentage increase for every value of T, um, the growth rate is 1 plus R over 100. So for example, if I know the growth rate is 9%, 9%, then that means that um, the, uh, the growth rate of, of R, R is 9 in this case. So 9 over 100 plus, plus 1 means that the value for A is going to be 1.09. We can see that that is going to be multiplying by the initial value each time because the um, and, and every time we um, have another time period go by we multiply by it again. That's what the power um, the, that's why we've got the t as the power there because every time we um, another time period goes on we multiply by that rate again increasing that the value at that time. If we're looking for decay rate we do exactly the same thing except we subtract away the rate um, given as a percentage there um, the r over 100. So if it was decreasing by 9% then we'd have 1 minus 9 over 100 and so the decay rate in this case would be 0 0.91 and once again that multiplies each time. So the rate and time value need to be comparable. 
if the time is measured in months, then the percentage must be in increase or decrease per month. If you're given the percentage as a per annum and the time values that we've got are in uh, months, what you can you can either you've got to you've got to convert one or the other. So you can either it's probably easier to have the time still in months, but essentially divide the um, percentage that you're given by the number of months in a year. So if you're given this nine percent per annum rate, but you're looking at the time per month, you know how it's increasing per month, and so. It, um, you want to know how many after how many time periods, then you can do nine, that nine percent divided by 12 months to find what's the percentage increase per or decrease per month, and then your time can value can be in months then. But they need to be comparable, so they need to be in the same kind of units. So either in year, both in years, or both in seconds, or both in in um, in uh, minutes, whatever whatever it is. Let's look at a couple of examples now of how we can write um, some exponential rules. So the first example we have here is we've got John, he's got a painting, it's valued at $100,000. So this is our initial value that we've been given here. It says it's expected to increase in value, so we're looking at growth here, uh, by 14% per annum. So that's 14% each year. So we're asked to write it um, as an exponential equation. We can fir firstly we need to find the growth or decay rate. Now we've been told it's increasing, so it is growing. So that means we've got one plus r over 100. This is one plus 14 over 100. So in this case, it's going to be 1.14. That's our growth rate. Now a general form for any equation is a is equal to k a t. It's the power of t. So we need to substitute in the values. We know that k is our initial value is 100,000, 100,000. Our value for a is 1.14 to the power of t. And that's our rule for um, the, the painting. So the a is, being, is the um, value of the painting and t is the uh, time that has passed in years. So if we look at b here, We've got a city's population, 50,000. It's de decreasing by 12% per year. So we've got an exponential decay in this case. So it means that our rate A is going to be 1 minus um, our rate over 100. So it's going to be 1 minus 12 over 100, which comes out as 0 0.88. That's our decay rate, 0 0.88. Now we know we can write our general form. We should always write the formula. A equals Ka to the t. So A is our, is our amount at time t. Our initial amount is 50,000. Our initial population is 50,000. And our growth rate, decay rate rather, is 0 0.88 to the power of t. So this is our exponential model for the city's population. We're looking at an example here now um, where we're asked to find and solve some, some values um, involved in an exponential relationship. So firstly, we've got house prices are rising, so it's growth at 9% per year. So that's 9% every year. Zoe's flat is this amount, $600,000. Firstly, we're being asked to determine a rule for Zoe's flat. So once again, we need to find the growth rate. A is going to be equal to 1 plus 1 R over 100, which is 1 plus 9 over 100, which is 1.09. The We know the exponential, general exponential uh, form is A is equal to K A to the power of T. Now, our value for A is the value for Zoe's flat, so we're told it's a V. The V dollars is um, Zoe's flat. It's initially 600,000. The growth rate we know is 1.09 from our calculation before, and T is, is going to be N because we're asked for an N year's time. So that is our relationship. V is equal to 600,000 times 1.09 to the power of N. Now for B, 
part I, it asks what is the value of Zoe's flat in a year's time. So we use our formula, writing down the formula first always, 0.09 to the power of n, substitute in the value we care about. So we're being, we're being told that n next year, that's one year later, that's going to be 1.09 to the power of 1. So we get that the answer or that the value of Zoe's flat is 6, is 6, 5, 4, 000. And so then we can answer, therefore, Zoe's flat will be worth 6, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3. Looking at C, sorry, B part 2. In three years time we write our formula, V is equal to 600, 1, 2, 3, uh, our growth rate 1.09 to the power of N, 600,000, substitute in the known value, and the known value is three years, and then if we um, plug that into our calculator we, calculator, we get that her flat will be uh, worth $777,000 and $17. So therefore Zoe's flat will be worth seven 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 oh one seven after three years. Now uh, our final question here C is asking us to determine when Zoe's flat will be valued at nine hundred thousand dollars to one decimal place. We currently don't have an analytical method or an algebraic method to be able to determine the value of an exponent. So we can't solve this easily, we need to think of some other strategies that we can use to solve this problem. So one strategy that we can use to solve this problem is we can look at drawing a graph and then trying, if the graph is nice and accurate, then we can hopefully read the value off the graph. So in order to do that, we need to have a look at what point the, um, the graph is going to reach $900,000. Um, so in order to get it as accurate as possible, we should probably do it for a few years and see what time, uh, what time we get when it goes past the $900,000 mark. So we should do a, a table of values, N and V here. Look at after one year, two years, three, four, five, and we'll see, we'll see whether that yields over $900,000. So this is our value for V in dollars. So after one year, we've already calculated that. That value is $654,000. I'm not going to write the $1,000 in each of these ones here. It's, um, we can worry about that when we're drawing the graph and finding the answer. After three years, we also know that it's about $777,000. After two years, if we make a quick calculation, we'll get that it's about $713,000. Um, and at four years, it'll be about 847, almost at the 900,000, but not quite there. And then after five years, we've surpassed the $900,000 mark and we're at um, 923. So now, if we plot these values on our graph, if we plot these values on a, on a graph, then we will be able to um, have a look at, um, at seeing if we can determine the value accurately. So if we look at putting some axes down that we can easily plot, we know that we're starting at 0, 600,000 here. After one year, it was 654,000. So 654 is going to be 600, 652, 54 here. It's going to be about here. And then after another year, 777. So 7, sorry, that's not going to be quite there, is it? Let's erase those and start again. 
we've got 654 because this is 650 the next dot is 660 so it's just here so after two years it's 713 so 713 is going to be just 71 is going to be just here and then after three years 777 so 777 here is going to be about five six seven and then halfway in between about here and then after four years it's 847 so 847 so that's just below this value here there we go and the last value is 923,900 and 20 is about here. I think one of my points is probably a little bit off. I think that's my, uh, this one here. You won't see me correcting this, but I'm correcting it. 777, isn't it? 70, so this is 780. 60, it's probably more like here. Okay, so if we can plot this very neatly, we should be able to get a good trend, hopefully, hopefully. So we're asked at what point it reaches 900,000. We've got our 900,000 on the graph here, 900,000 on the graph here. So if we look at where that point intersects and we go all the way down here, it's in between four and it's definitely in between four and five, 4.6 and 4.8. So it's in between 4.6 and 4.8. So it's about 4.7. So we're asked for um, one decimal place. So we could say using a graph, a graph, she will reach 900,000 at about 4.7 years. Okay, another method, another method rather than using the graphical method is we can use a guess and improve method. Um, it's not my favorite method to use, but it's one that will, that should be quite effective here. It is a little time consuming, however, because we do need to make sure that we make very smart decisions otherwise um, with choosing which values of n to choose. So from our previous um, example, if we substituted in four um, for n, then we saw that um, we got 847,000. And if we substituted in five, we, we put 900 and we got 923,000. So it would be sensible to say in between v um, 847 and 923, 4.5. Let's try 4.5 and see what we get. And if we substitute 4.5 into our equation, we get 884. And so we can see we're slightly under. Let's try in between 4.5 and 5. If we try 4.7, we'll see what that is because we're only doing it to one decimal place. We get 899. Now that seems really, really close. So maybe 4.7 is, is the correct one, but we can't say for sure. We should try and just see where 4.8 is, just in case 4.8 is somehow closer. But if we put 4.8 in, we get 907,000. So it's obvious that 4.7 is the closest value that we get. So we've been able to see two different methods there, but it's very important if you're using guess and improve that you need to make sure you're using it sensibly and thinking about, all right, am I getting closer? What and, and using estimation for each of the choices that you make um, when you're substituting in. Otherwise, you can be here for a very long time, and it can it can be a very ineffectual method. Next, looking at compound interest. Compound interest 
is how interest is normally calculated. We've looked at simple interest in the past, but most um, investment accounts and, um, and, and loans don't use simple interest, they use compound interest. So compound interest involves adding any interest earned to the balance at the end of each period. So it ex works exponentially. Essentially, if you've got an amount of money in your bank account, at the end of each month, they look at the amount of money in the bank, bank account and add the interest on then. Then, for the next period, interest is added on to that amount and includes the interest that you've earned. So it means that you, um, you increase the value of your account exponentially over time, um, which, which is much better than simple interest where you paid the lump sum at the end of the, of the period. So in order to determine compound interest, we use the same exponential um, formula, the same general form of the exponential formula, but we give certain um, special names to those values. So A is the given as the amount, the amount, I've written them over here, um, at the total amount of the investment after the time period that we're looking at. P is the principal, um, it's the initial amount that we have, the principal amount is the initial amount we have. R is your interest rate, the rate of interest, um, and it's given as it's not given as a percentage, we substitute in here, if this is 9%, we substitute in 9 for 9%. And N is the number of periods the principal is invested for. Now often, almost always, interest is given as a percentage per annum and is, calc and is actually um, compounded monthly. So it means that if you do get um, a percentage 9%, then the percentage per month is 9 over 12%. You've got to divide that because um, that percentage increase, that or that percentage um, uh, interest that is applied to your account is just a, that one twelfth of the whole year, but it's applied every month. And so then N is the number of months that we're actually looking at. If we look, want to in, worry about and find the interest earned, so actually how much interest has been earned on the account, it's the difference between the amount that you have and the amount you invested. So it's A minus P in this case. So let's have a look at some examples here. Question one here says, determine the amount after five years, $4,000 is compounded annually at 8%. So it means it's compounded each year, round to the nearest cent. So I know that, um, oh, I can write the interest formula here. Um, it's A is equal to P, one plus R over 100 to the N, the number of um, periods. The principal in this case is 4,000. The interest rate is 8%. So that means that our uh, rate of increase is 1.08. And N in this case is uh, five years and it's compounded every year. So that means it's the number of periods. So it's five periods each of one year. And, and the interest rate is given as in per annum as well. They're in the same units. So if I um, pop that into my calculator, I get that it, we get 5877.31. And so therefore the amount after five years is $5,877.31. For question two, Anthony's investing $4,000 as well. It's compounded slightly greater, but this one is compounded monthly. Okay, so this one's not compounded um, each year. And it's up over the same time period, five years. So firstly, what we need to do is we need to work out the interest rate uh, per month. So if we're looking at the rate per month, the rate per month is going to be 8.4% divided by 12. So that's going to be 8.4% um, divided by 12. Give me one sec. 0.7. Yep, did that in my head. So that means that the interest rate per month is going to be 0.7% applied every month. So our actual um, rate is 0.7 over the 100 plus 1. So we can now use our formula. It's, if it's over five years as well, so we're looking at the period, five years, 
is five, it's, but each period isn't one year. Each period is one month. So we need to, because we're looking at it compounding monthly. So the period the, is, um, is five years. So the number of periods is the number of months in that time, which is 5 times 12, which is 60. Now, I did use a calculator for that one. So 60 periods. So it means that for our formula, A equals the principal times 1 plus R over 100 to the power of N, uh, we want to find out our amount. The principal is $4,000, 1, 2, 3. The interest rate is 0 0.7 over the 100. And the number of periods is 60. So if we put that into our calculator, we get $6,078.95. So we can see we've got a slightly greater interest rate, but we also earn slightly greater amount of interest if it's compounded monthly rather than yearly. Now, we haven't answered the question yet because it says we were investing $4,000. It's 8.4% each year and it's over five years. The interest is paid monthly. So we've all done all of that. But where, what are we being asked for? We're determining the interest. This is what we need to find. So we haven't found the interest. We've found the amount. So in order to find the interest, what we need to do is we need to find the difference between the amount that we're at and the principal. So the amount was $6,078.95. And the principal is 2000, sorry, the principal is 4000. So we end up getting that the amount of interest that is actually paid is the difference between those two. $2,078.95. So that means we can say, therefore, the interest earned is $2,078.95 to the nearest cent. So just recapping the uh, learning goals for this lesson, we've been able to model uh, some uh, situations using exponential equations. We've been able to solve um, different variables in those exponential equations. And we've looked at compound interest and being able to apply that um, and apply compound, compound interest to real world situations.